Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at macros in Rust. So Rust provides a fairly powerful macro system which allows for metaprogramming. Macros look like functions except they use a bang at the end or in other words an exclamation point. So for instance the println statement and the vect statement are both macros. As you can see here they end in an actual exclamation point. So any function that you've seen thus far that ends in an exclamation point is actually a macro. Instead of generating a function call, macros are expanded into source code, which then gets compiled with the rest of the program. Unlike C or other languages, Rust macros are expanded into abstract syntax trees rather than string preprocessing. And this has a number of different advantages to it. All right, so to create a macro, we use this macro, ironically, called macro rules. Then we have the name of the macro, followed by a set of curly braces. And then we have a unit here, followed by a what looks like a match statement. And then we have another unit here with the body of our macro. So in this case, the body of our macro just invokes the println macro with a string inside of it that just says this is a macro. So we can just call on our macro just by calling the name of it, which in this case is a macro followed by an exclamation point and parentheses, and then we can run it. And you can see here, predictably, it just prints out the statement that we had inside of our macro body. So you may be looking at this simple example and thinking, well, why exactly are macros useful and when should I use them? Well, typically you use macros when you don't want to repeat yourself. So there are many times inside of a program where you'll find that you're using similar functionality and maybe you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself. So you create a macro that does it for you. Also, you can use macros to implement domain-specific languages, or DSLs. If I wanted to, I could actually write a fully working Lisp language inside of Rust using the macro system. Also, you can use macros to implement what are called veratic in interfaces. Now, veratic interface is similar to uh, the println statement in that it allows us to have a variable number of arguments inside of our quote-unquote function. So with the println statement in Rust, we can have essentially any number of arguments in it and it'll still run. The arguments of a macro are prefixed by a dollar sign. So in this case, we have our argument as E. And then we type annotate them with what is called a designator. In this case, we're using EXPR, which stands for expression. So we're saying here that this E quote unquote variable inside of our macro can be any expression. And since Rust is essentially an expression-based language, this can be virtually anything. What our macro here is doing is it's actually using two match statements. So we have a match statement here, and then we have a match statement here. So when we call this one down here, where we have x, and then we have the arrow for 10, this will take 10, assign it to e, and then put it inside of this println statement. When we have y here, this will take the 20 plus 30, assign it to E here, and actually print out Y and then 20 plus 30 as a string. And you can see here we get our X and 10 and then we get Y and 50. All right, so for our new macro here called buildfn, we have a function name here, which is an ident, which stands for identifier. And identifiers are typically just function names or variable names. In this case, it's standing for a function name. So we're using our fn keyword here, and then we're putting in the variable here, which is our function name. And then we're calling a print statement, and we're stringifying the uh, function name here so that we can pass it into our println statement here. So what is this macro doing? Well, it creates a function which we can then run which will then call this println statement. So you can see here, we can actually run the macro and then we can run the function that we passed into the macro. So the function just takes on the name of the uh, whatever we've passed into this macro. So in this case, hi there. And then we can just run hi there by uh, prefacing it with a pair of parentheses. And you'll see here we get you called hi there with parentheses. All right, let's look at this other example. We have an example called printEx. It takes an E expression and then it prints out that expression. So it stringifies the expression and then it evaluates the expression and then prints that out as well. So we can pass this entire expression block into this statement here. And this will actually get printed out right here in our println statement. And then the result of this will be printed out right here. And you can see here, 
uh, we have our other macros and then we have our entire expression here and then the result of the expression. So as you can imagine, it's pretty flexible to be able to pass an entire expression into a macro like this. Some of the other uh, designators or quote unquote types for macros include a block, we have our expression, we have our identifier, we have an item type, we have a pat type, which stands for pattern, we have a path type, we have an STMT, which stands for statement, we have a TT type, which stands for token tree, and we have a TY type, which stands for type. Macros can also be overloaded to accept different combinations of arguments. In this regard, it's similar to like a match block. So for instance, this would be an entire match statement, and then this would be another match statement. So our examine macro will compare our uh, L and our R, and depending on how we invoke it. So if we invoke it with an AND between our L and R, then it will run this block. If we invoke it with an OR between our L and R, then it will run this block. And essentially all it's doing is just running this statement here and then printing it out inside of this println statement. In this case, it's running an AND comparison, and in this case, it's running an OR comparison. Now it's important to note that when you wanna uh, denote a new block, you need to put a uh, semicolon here. So if you take a look at uh, this, for instance, we're invoking our examine, and we're saying one equals one, and we have a semicolon like we have here, and then we're using our and keyword, so it'll run this block, and then we're saying two equals one plus one. This will uh, then write one equals one here, two equals one plus one here, and then it will write the actual result of that in here, here. So we'll get back true. And you can see here, if we wanna run the other arm of our statement here, we can just call the or keyword. So we're just passing in true or false, and this will again turn back true. And here's the result of our two macros. So we, like we said before, we get one equals one and one equals one plus one, which is true. And then we get true or false, which also is true. All right, so here we have a new uh, macro. This is a list comprehension macro. This is similar to what you would get as a list comprehension in something like Python. So we have two identities that we have in here. So identity one and identity two. Then we have a start and an end, which are both expressions. And then we have a conditional, which is also an expression. We create a mutable vector here. And then we iterate through a range between start and end plus one. And we check and see if our conditional ex uh, expression is true in which case we push the number that it's true on into our vector, and then we return the vector at the end of our macro. And our two conditionals here are even and odd, so it's just x mod two equals zero, or x mod two does not equal zero. And we can invoke our comprehensions like this. So we say let evens equal comprehension for x, so x is identity one, and then we're saying where x is between one and 10, the syntax lines up, and then we call our function that we wanna check, which is just even, and then we do for odds, where we're saying y, where y is between one and 10, and then we call odds for our conditional as well. And you can see here is the result, so we get back two vectors, one is uh, all of our evens between one and 10, and the other one is all of our odds between one and 10. All right, so macros in Rust can use the plus in the argument list to indicate that an argument may repeat at least once, or it can use the asterisk to indicate that an argument may repeat zero or more times. We have here a macro called new map, and you see here that our actual argument list here is prefaced by a dollar sign itself, and then at the end we have this asterisk. What that is signifying is that this expression can repeat from zero to infinite times. So basically we have a key and we have a value, both of which are expressions, and we wanna repeat them over and over again, and then it will create for us a hash map. And you can see here that we're actually even using uh, the asterisk here to say that this will repeat the same amount of times that this repeats. So this function call gets called every single time we have a line that looks like this. And here's what our actual macro will look like. So you can see here, we're saying let m equal new map, and then we are putting in our key is one, our value is one, then our next key is two, and our next value is two, and our next key is three, and our next value is three. And what this will do is it will create a hash map with all of these as keys and values. So we could keep writing these, and we don't even need to put uh, commas here. In fact, if we do, this will error out. The macro will automatically know that we're just repeating the same pattern over and over and over again. 
and then it will invoke this function over and over and over again. Here's what our hash map looks like. You can see here one is the key for one, two is the key for two, and three is the key for three. And we could keep going if we wanted to. So we could modify this by putting a comma here in between the asterisk and the parenthesis. And this would allow us to put commas here between each of the patterns. And that would be just helpful just for syntax purposes. Now we can also put a plus sign here because that signifies to the macro that this pattern must at least appear once and it can repeat as many times as it wants, just like the asterisk. Whereas the asterisk is saying that we can actually write it without the expression appearing at all. If the expression appears zero or more times, we can use an asterisk. If it must appear at least once, then we use a plus sign. So this macro here with the hash map is a good example of the whole do not repeat yourself factoring. If we had a actual program where we needed to write a lot of hash maps or mutate a lot of hash maps, something like this would be very handy. All right, so here's a simple example of a domain specific language type macro. So here we're saying uh, macro rules, we're creating a calculation macro. And we're saying, okay, well, we want this eval keyword to actually do something. So this is obviously not a keyword inside of Rust, naturally. So the interesting thing about this macro, we're forcing all of the expressions that we pass through here to be type integer by destructing it into u sizes here. Then we're using this stringify function to stringify the actual expression that we're passing through. So this four times five will end up here and then the actual result will end up here. We get four times five equals 20. Now we mentioned that we could create variadic interfaces with our macros here and we haven't really looked at an example of this. Let's give it a shot by actually expanding this macro macro here. Here we've added a second branch to our eval and in this case we're actually calling our macro recursively. First we have a single expression here then there'll be a comma and then we can have one or more expressions after it which is followed by a comma and we use the plus sign like we talked about before and then the first one will be simply uh, called with our calc so it'll run through this branch and then the second one will be called recursively going through this branch or this branch based on how many actual evals are following. So here we can add more evals. Here I expanded it by adding three different lines here. We get our three different lines printed out. So we get five times four equals 20, four plus 10 equals 14, and then 10 times three minus 20 equals 10. Now, just so that you guys can see uh, what the macro system is capable of, let's take a look here. This is actually a Lisp implementation inside of Rust. Now, obviously this is fairly complex. It's not something that I wrote. It's actually a library that I just brought in here. You can see here that there's quite a few interesting things in here. At the bottom, I just put down a simple factorial function. So defun factorial, which takes in an i32 and outputs an i32. And then we just say if n is less than or equal to one, then we print out one, else we run through this little statement here, which is uh, n minus one, and then we call factorial recursively. And then even our main function for our program is actually inside of our Lisp macro here. And we create a constant, which is num factorial 10, and then we print out the result of running this function over and over and over. And here's the result of running uh, 10 factorial, which gives us back uh, 3,628,800. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then downvote it as much as you'd like. I hope you guys have a good night.